Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us on Owen TV. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Good evening, glorious people of Lake Orion. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ian Witherspoon. My name is Ian Witherspoon. My name is Ian Witherspoon. I'm your host, and I am. And I am. And I. In between Terminas. Between Terminas. In between Terminas. Between Terminas. And I. Am at Benito's. Between Terminas. Yes, I am. New studio, new look, new show. We'll catch you after the break. We are. We're back. It's, I mean, how long has it been? February 2020 was our last show. <whistles> yeah, it really wow. was. It's it's amazing to be sitting here with you guys. I can't believe it. I can't. I'm 19 months. Up. We've had to deal with the pandemic. I mean, pandemic. still dealing with it. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. These balloon colors fun. look beautiful. Red, blue, yeah, yellow, so, purple, green. So gray. we're back beautiful. here. We've got a lot of fanfare. Mm -hmm. You may want to explain what the sign behind us and the balloons are for. What's 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 all it's about? It is our tenth year anniversary of Between Terminas. It's um, a we've decade. Been, yes, it's been a decade of BT. Exciting, isn't it? A decade. That's wild. Though. I know. Makes me feel old. Well, and it, it's nice to have BT back because yeah. um, you know I got a lot of a lot of my kids <clears throat> at Scripps Middle School. Speaking of that, I have a cup Ooh. from Scripps Middle School, oh. Lake Orion Scripps. This is my coffee cup that I use every day at Scripps. Are we celebrating Scripps or us? Come on, let's go. But my point is, is that my you. kids, so don't start. my yeah. point is my kids, the kids were asking, Mr. Termina, when is Between Terminas going to come back? When they is, call you Mr. Termina? Yes, they do. Kids, his name's Anthony. All right, come on. No, they have to call me that. It's professional. Ah, you have to be professional, Ian. Ah, you have to be. You have to be professional. If if they call you, if they call me by my first name, then that's you know then they're gonna get in some trouble for that. But all that's right, you know. All right. You you have to understand that it's professional. You have to. It's Mr. Terramina. I forget we're old and adults sometimes. We're and adults I'm, now. I forget that okay. sometimes. Pardon anyways, me. anyways, it's um. Anyways, they were asking when it's between Terramina's gonna come back and um. You know, I'm proud to say that it's it's back. It's back. Mm -hmm. Here we are. It really is. It's it is. It, it mean, it's truly a special thing. Um, when I last did my History Now show, I made a promise that Between Terramina was going to come back, and um, but and here we are. We're back. <sighs> BT's back. So back. it's truly an amazing accomplishment for all of us. That you know, we've mm -hmm. all have had really. We've all been busy. We've all been different. We've all been living. Busy lives. You, you know, you recently became a father. Congratulations, mm -hmm. Ian. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very, very you know, I always say on my it. podcast, Appreciate I always it. say, like, you know, I'm a, one of the hosts of Between Three Minutes on Ordinary Television. You know what I mean? I mean, like, and I, and I mean that. You know, we yeah. make sure that the show is not forgotten. Right. And um, I think that that was the one thing that really concerned me when we were in our exile was, was Between Three Minutes going to be forgotten? Because, obviously, when we were... Um, when the pandemic first hit, you know, at first nobody was allowed in the studio. Right. Mm -hmm. But then once the the it started the the rule the restrictions started to come up, then it became only two people were allowed in the studio. Right. And um, you know, one of the things that was being considered was you know having you be called in, call in via Zoom. Via Zoom, and right. you know, it just it it just does not make a lot of sense. I mean, right. Naturally, I mean the when when we started B BT. It was really three guys that really, you know, it just, it was a natural conversation exactly. between three of us that started mm -hmm. in sixth grade and we're kind of bringing it on air and bringing it to ONTV. And that we got to thank ONTV. 20 years ago, yes, right? it was. And we got to thank ONTV okay. for allowing us to, to bring the, to, for allowing this to happen. They let us in the place. The mm -hmm. door's not locked. Let us and, in the place, yep. you know, 
all the the, the beautiful decorations. Mm -hmm. We've hit some milestones. They've yes, always celebrated mm -hmm. us, and it's been very appreciated. We have our milestones here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, you know, we couldn't do it without Tracy and Joe and mm -hmm. Ian and, and Joey yeah. and mm -hmm. all the folks. Ian became the a years. host, uh, one of my um, my co-hosts on I'm Only Now. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. awesome. Got I mean, w one of the guys you got to thank, obviously, is Joe Johnson. Joe Johnson's mm -hmm. been around almost since the beginning. Um, Darn near. We were probably yeah. on episode six or seven or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, <laughs> when he came back, and obviously Joe has been a major, major part. You got to mm -hmm. give him a lot of credit, a lot of oh, love. Absolutely. Um, obviously, he's helped me with history now. Also, mm -hmm. um, Joey Tysick is another one. Mm -hmm. um, I got to give Joey a lot of credit as well. Um, I mean, we can't do this without without no, on TV. No. We really can't. And luckily, we've had people tune in over the years mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to we've keep us thankful. going for three hundred. We've I had guests three twelve. Three twelve. Mm -hmm. We've had guests come on: Pat Caputo, Chris Barnett, Greg Campy, Greg Campy, Bob yep, Bridges. Bob Bridges. I mean, Jeff Tungay. I Dan mean, Fife. Dan, yeah, Bill Reese. I mean, it's. I mean, the the, the, the numbers. It, it just just quite an accomplishment and I mean it just feels so good to be back it does I mean it brings if, even if we can bring a sense of normalcy right to our viewers even if it's just for 30 minutes it'd be it, it's a great accomplishment and sure. I think that that's something that you know and we, we really missed it oh big time mm -hmm. you know we really did big time so, Miss getting here with you guys talking sports mm -hmm, having mm -hmm. some laughs mm -hmm. maybe a few tears a few tears a few tears <laughs> yes whether and also our goofy antics. I mean, you look at okay. There were times where we were in a paper, paper bags on the shelf. I might I had get mine back hair. out. <laughs> I might. I had long hair. You 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 look like death at times, Sam. You look, <laughs> <laughs> and it's the same. You know. You know. Uh -huh. I think you look pretty similar to him. Well, I'm so talking that about an episode. On you? Oh, okay. I'm talking about episodes, genius. You uh, you wore a kitty cat costume and embarrassed on a global scale. Hey, you know. You wore. And you caught the tiger at the world. You Series. wore a cat suit. Why? That is absolutely people atrocious. turn on the television for entertainment. You got to give the people a little something to laugh at. And me wearing a spandex tiger suit, I think, <laughs> provides a little humor. I wore a Grim Reaper suit. I've worn a paper bag. I basically. I've worn my Avalanche jersey. You've worn your Dallas Stars jersey. We had Coach Jim Manzo on our show wearing a Red Wings jersey. We've had a Michigan Maniac on our show. Yeah, we've had that. That, guy, Maniac. Yeah, that guy needs help. We've had the Michigan Maniac. That guy needs I'll help. Forget that one. That mm -hmm. guy needs help. He's doing. He's doing very well. Do what I hear. Good. That guy needs help. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. We'll see how he's doing in a few weeks when yeah. Michigan season rolls along. But uh, you know, Mich You know, Michigan. Um, you know, Michigan needs all the help they can get. I mean, yeah. they took advantage of a poor Washington team. What? Yes. They, I mean, like, that was a... That was hey, Western <clears throat> Michigan's good. Western Michigan's not bad. They're okay. But Michigan State, you know, they knocked the Northwestern, then they beat a mighty Youngstown State. Now oh, they get yeah. the U this weekend. The mighty the Youngstown U. State. Huh? The mighty Youngstown State. Yes. And now they get the U this weekend. Be a fun game. I just hope Mel Tucker just keeps it simple with the uniforms. Yeah. I know you're a big time uniform critic. Obviously, um, if people follow your blog on the Oakland Activities Association, the OA. Inside the OA. Um, I mean, you are a big time uniform critic. Yes, I am. So you don't want to see State with the lime green uniform on? <laughs> they got to get rid of those. I hate the lime green. I, if that ever comes back. I want them to bring back the shoulder yokes. I mean, I know there's a certain... You're a big shoulder yoke guy. I know there's a certain high school football team that I want them to wear shoulder yokes instead of the stripe life. But other than that, everything else, you know what I mean? Okay. I just can't stand white helmets either. You know what I mean? No offense. Oh, come on. Some They're team, great. Some teams... Oh, no. Some teams... Some, some teams, teams... it's bad. Some, well, some teams that wear the white helmets bad... But others, you know what I mean? It looks good. I state? mean, there's no. Yes. No. Yes. Not Michigan State with a white helmet. No. Looks good. Green, green helmet, white jersey, white pants, best attire in the Big Ten. I wouldn't mind seeing them go all white or all green. I, I like think those that's combos. the one thing that no. I, I like I think, the all white with the green helmet. I think that's the one yeah. thing that the people yeah. that our yeah. viewers missed was the constant debate between. Every one of us, especially you two. Between you know. Terminas. Yes, and watching you two argue while I'm just waving at the camera like this. We don't argue. We, we don't agree argue. on everything. 
We don't I mean, it's just retreat. It's just a treat. I mean, we don't. We argue on lions who are daycare. You center. see, you just admitted you guys both argue. Well, listen, we got to go to a break here in a moment, I believe. But uh, we're gonna quit patting ourselves on the back. We're gonna get into some sports debates. These balloons uh, are nice. The Lions. Hey, ten years have gone by, and <laughs> they haven't made the playoffs. Not much has changed. Not much has so changed. So we might get the paper bags back out. We got a lot to get through from the weekend of football. Uh, baseball's winding down. The Tigers are looking pretty good since May. Uh, Hockey's coming up. The uh, Red Wings are a daycare center. Shh, no one cares about that. I agree. Uh, no one cares about the Wings. I agree. It's not hockey season yet. All right. But still, no one cares about the Wings. There's not even frost on the ground. All right. So we'll we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back, and we're going to dive into football here on Between Terramina. These balloons are nice. ONTV invites filmmakers of all ages to take part in the annual Wildwood Film Festival. Kickoff is on Thursday, October 7th at 6 p.m. Filmmakers have five days to plan, shoot, and edit a short film that will be critiqued by a panel of judges and shown on the big screen at the Oxford 7 Theater on October 13th. Cost is $50 per team, which goes toward prize money and a portion of which will benefit Lake Orion High School's SOS program. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Yes, indeed. This is Between Terminas here on ONTV. Ian, you're eating your cupcake. I thought breaks were like two minutes, man. You know you're um <clears throat> you know that you're um you should consider you shouldn't consider being a judge for that Wildwood Festival. You know what? I am in no position to judge anyone else's creative work. You need to judge somebody's creative work. I might do it. You might. You better do I've it. I've been a judge before. Come yes, on. I know. You've been a proven judge. Well, thank you. You know, you, you know it, they, they do some really, really good videos. They really, they do. really do. They do. It's I amazing that, what, it's ama yeah. especially a lot of the younger kids, mm -hmm. high school mm -hmm. age kids, come right. up with with the... Uh, the editing and whatnot, it's it's wild. Mm -hmm. it's at least wild at least at least that group is burning the Detroit Lions right now. Well <coughs> the Lions. Yes, the Lions. So to recap, they played the Niners. Yes. Opening weekend. You yeah. know one of our alumni, one of our brother brothers is a big time Tennessee Titans fan. <laughs> Nobody cares about Troy. <laughs> <laughs> Except I hear Troy. he's gonna be a father soon, is that correct? Or he is uh, a father? I heard of that. I've oh. heard of it. That's so, but anyways, that's Congrats. beyond the point. Yeah, we're I not mean, talking about becoming, the Titans. Our brothers are becoming, our brothers are becoming fathers. And brothers are becoming what? fathers. I mean, here's somehow, somehow. Are you sure Jared Goff's the right answer? No, he's not. He's not. He's not. He's not the right answer. I mean, like, I talked on Twitter the other day to the new West Bloomfield Boys basketball coach, Ernest Jordan, about this team. And the thing I'm saying to you is this. Who besides T.J. Hawkinson are they going to throw the ball to? There's basically no names on that. There are no names on that team. You know it. I know it. Whole the world knows it. Crew the receiving is crew is, is god awful. It's god god awful. I mean, like I've been telling, trying to tell Lake Orion Athletic Director Chris Bell to see the light on the Lions that they're nothing more than a daycare center. What's his opinion on the Lions? He thinks they're going to go all the way and win a Super Bowl. This year, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he he needs an evaluation. <laughs> of course. Look, their plan. I don't think it can't be to win right now. They're trying to build. They're trying to see who they well, have. Well, that defense is is sure. That defense, that is, defense still, is not. You know, if the I'm receivers are god awful, the defense is. Uh, we'll say vomit in a. <laughs> In a understatement of the soaked century. paper bag. I mean, understatement. I mean, it's, this is the 49ers. I'm not being me. The 49ers are not exactly the best NFL football team. What? They're not the a good team. The Niners are a good team, my man. They're a good team. I'm I mean, just saying, not exactly. They're not exactly great. They're, they're not, not the Rams. They got they're some not issues. The, they got some issues. The Niners seem to have injury issues, issues, especially every year. I don't know what it is about the 49ers. Quarterback issues. I mean, Garoppolo's not the best. No, but Trey Lance really played well. Um, His one throw was good. Yeah, really impressed with the rookie. So you're playback. so you're justifying the Lions' loss. Both of you are just no. I'm loss. not justifying a loss at all because no. It seems like you both are. They gave up over they 40 points. They played terribly. They played terrible, and the only reason why they came back in that game is because of garbage time and I'm 
and I bet you the 49ers are playing their second stringers. But let's rewind. Okay, let's go back to the year of our Lord, 2018. Matt Patricia's hired. You open up on Monday Night Football against a 20-year-old quarterback named and Sam Darnold. Darnold, who throws a pick six on his first throw, by the way. So mm -hmm. they spotted you seven points. And they went on to win the game, what was it, like 45-18? Yes. Something along those lines. Mm -hmm. This game against the Niners was trending that way, mm -hmm. but they did not give up. They did not roll over like they did for Matt Patricia. I think a lot of that something is the respect has, factor. Respect something has factor to be for said coach. for Dan Campbell. I think the entire coaching staff, though. I think the level of respect <laughs> is better. For the, in terms of the coaching staff. I, I don't think the Lions truly, really ever respected Matt Patricia. Well, Matt... And I don't no. think Matt Patricia really respected them. Exactly, exactly. And that's, you know, I don't think, you know, he tried to install the the New England Patriots style right. with the Lions, and that it just doesn't work. No. It, that and he, you know, it helps to have these coaches that have been players mm. to know what an NFL football player has to go through. Mm -hmm. Matt Patricia had no clue. He's just used to barking out orders. Now he's back with New England. Yeah, well, ugh. Now he got Mac Jones at quarterback there. Yeah. We're, okay, so the Lions got Monday night coming up at Against Lambeau. Against the Packers, where they had not been very successful. No. And do we know what happened to the Packers week one? They got blown out in Jacksonville. Rodgers got benched. And he threw zero touchdown passes. Mm -hmm. No touchdown passes. Two interceptions. two interceptions. And there's a lot of expectation in Green Bay. There is. There is. Do we think, okay, so we can kind of go over Aaron Rodgers' offseason. Didn't show up to any spring practice. Yeah. Mm -mm. Showed up late, kind of, or whatever, to, to training mm -hmm. camp. Um, Had the issues with the pack. Are these lingering effects that will be corrected and Aaron Rodgers is going to be Aaron Rodgers? Or is this... The downfall of Aaron Rodgers. You know what? I'm gonna. You know what? Aaron Rodgers will be Aaron Rodgers in this game because the Lions' defense is that putrid. I mean, you look at Week Two. You know, if you have Green Bay's defense on your fantasy team, I would start him with confidence. I mean, because the fact of the matter is, is that the Lions' defense is absolutely just putrid. Beyond awful, so fantasy. Wait, list. you said to start the Green Bay defense. Oh no, start Aaron Rodgers. I'm talking. Well, though you just said start the Green. Bay. Okay, uh, I, I didn't get where you're it's saying. also not the, a bad idea. No, start, not a bad no, idea. Not a bad idea. But um, not but start. Idea. But if you have Packers this week, start them. Get them in the game. Get them in the game. Get them in your lineup. The Lions are proving to be the Hello Kitties of the NFC North, and they're gonna scare keep. They're gonna scare people away, especially in the state of Michigan when Green Bay whips them. 48 to 10. So we see no improvement from the Lions. Absolutely week week. no improvement. No. Jared Goff's going to get picked off three times in this game. Does it not help, though, that the Lions have a somewhat young secondary? I know it's bad to start. They but just lost Jeff Okuda for the season. I okay. mean, dude. God bless him. Hope he gets healthy. Hope he can come they back. They need but, to sign somebody. But does losing Jeff Okuda from the defense hurt the defense? Yes. Can you tell me how? Because he's a proven co corner. A proven corner in high school, maybe. Not in the NFL. He yeah. was proven in college. Proven Ohio State. He played for Urban Meyer. Is maybe it doesn't. Who knows? What? Sam, Jeff Okuda was god awful. I can I can hear somebody whispering in the wind. There's that a it might be a blessing there. in disguise. Ooh, a ghost. That he's not going to be out on the field. Hey, there's a ghost out there. Sam. Do you not want right? a man to get injured. Obviously, it could be the ghost. It could be the ghost of a few people. It could be the ghost of Bill Reese. It could be the ghost of Joey Tysic. It could be the ghost of Madonna. Those things. Need I to think deleted. Madonna could even evaluate Jeff Okuda <laughs> and would disagree with you that he is not. A proven quarterback in this league. You just said quarterback or corner? I said corner, but I was no, joking. You said corner. No, you said corner. You didn't say corner. Say I would rather league. see him at quarterback because he ain't working out wide at corner. Are you sure? But they're a daycare center, so don't Jared worry Goff about it. Jared Goff isn't working out so well either. So Jared Goff isn't working out either. Look, <sighs> the Tigers, young team, we wanted to see improvement. We wanted to see some the fight. The Tigers. That's what I want to see from the Lions this year. Show me week-to-week -week improvement. Show me buy into well, the coaching the Tigers staff. Are beating, the Tigers are beating first-place teams. Other, there's only two teams they've struggled against, really, the Indians and the Angels. 
and they've been pretty bad against the and, Pirates. And you know that Cle and you know that the Cleveland's getting rid of the Royals Indians. Struggle. Yeah, mm -hmm. the Guardians. Give me the Cleveland, the Guardians. the Cleveland Guardians. What do you think about that? I mean, I get their what. I don't like it, but it's a Cleveland like it. thing. I don't like it, but I'm telling you, it's. I'm I think telling the you. spiders would have been kind of cool. Maybe, or maybe like a cartoon character would have been great. So you have no juice for this Monday night game. Absolutely, absolutely not. not. I, the I mean, Packers are going to crush them. Packers are going to crush them. We it's both Lambo. Fans are going to be there. They got the Lambo leap. You're going to be hearing that at least five times. You got Aaron Rodgers' stupid <laughs> hair. Aaron Rodgers is going to go nuts in that game. I, he might even do the Lambo leap. I can't stand him. He might do Lambo. I leap. wish he would have stayed on Jeopardy. And then, even though I love Jeopardy, and don't want to see him anymore on that either. But the Tigers, but the the Tigers are showing improvement. The the Tigers are showing. They're showing improvement. improvement. Is that yes. a somewhat of a compliment? Compliment. You're giving yeah. the Tigers. I'm giving them compliment. Folks, in ten years, I've never heard Sammy I've never compliment, heard Sammy compliment the Tigers, Tigers, even though they played in the World but Series. But the Lions are a day yeah, you cost them the World Series. But the Lions, but the Lions are a daycare center. They they are like, and that's a good thing, man. And then, would you rather have Patriot retreads? Hey, look, there's Duran Harmon out there because he's the only guy that would take our money. <laughs> Hey, look, here comes uh, Tavai. You know what? They need to go get Dre Bly back. Might as, well. Might, as well. Might as well. They need young guys, man. They need veterans. They have plenty of veterans. They got a veteran quarterback who throws pick sixes <laughs> into triple coverage. Yep. Do we need more of that? We sure. don't need more of that. Are aye, you saying they go to a youth movement? I like the youth movement, man. Any final yeah. thoughts, guys? I, I, I'm excited. Okay, you're done. I'm excited okay, for we'll Lions right football, back, man. Okay, we'll be right back between Terminus. I, I, I love on football. I wait all year around yeah, for this, yeah. you know? I mean, come on. I'm going to eat my cupcake. Well, sadly, folks, we have come to the last segment of Between Terminus for this inaugural episode. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we would like to give a preview, maybe, uh, of the high school playoffs and of the Lake Orion Clarkston football game this Friday which is today. Um, Sammy and Anthony are both very in tune to the uh, happenings at the high school football program. And uh, let's take it away. Sammy. This is a big game for Lake Orion tonight. If you look at it based on the expectation of the Dragons, you know, like last year beating Clarkson 28 to seven, you know, and of course Clarkson's playoff life is on the line tonight. You know, like of course, I think Sean Charette's got to have a big game. His record at Clarkson this year is his record at Clarkston, at Clarkston, his career is 0-2. You know, I mean, like, so this is a big game for the Dragons, but it's also a big game for the Wolves. Clarkston features two good linebackers, good quarterback, good running back in Joey Goss. I mean, like, if, if the Dragons to win, the Dragons have got to play their game, and they cannot, they can't mess up like they did last week against Harrison, especially in the red zone. I'm going to... I think the it, the mental mind, mindset should be not just not on eliminating Clarkston, but more of getting back. <laughs> and I think that's the mindset of the um, that's the mindset that both teams should go into this week. It's just getting better. Yeah, they both lost last week, but they both should be looking at getting better. And as in the case with Clarkston, it's a must win for Clarkston, but it's also a must win for Lake Orion. <laughs> Oh, that was ten years ago. Ten good recap. Years yeah, good ago. recap of um of the Lake Orion Clarkson game. I still remember that game. Clarkson won that game. Any of those that guys we've one. talked about? Are they in the NFL at this point, or they're doing well though. I mean, they're doing well outside of football. I mean, you know, that's all you can ask for. I mean, they're all doing well. That's good. all you can ask. I mean, good, good. Mm -hmm. I ate a cupcake. Yeah, you ate your cupcake. It was tasty. There was a little cream in the middle. It was nice. great. So Fantastic. we want to bring back something that means a lot to viewers is the call-out section. So you remember that when we would always do call-outs, right? Yeah. Hey, uh, listeners or viewers, if you haven't tuned in before, uh, get your earplugs out. Uh, this is the time where uh, Sammy will, we're going to turn off his mic, but you will <laughs> still hear him through your television set somehow. So... Okay, go ahead, Ann. Sorry. Okay. So Just my call trying to out. Warn folks. Okay, so my call out this week is going to be Lake Orion Athletic Director Chris Bell. Oh Why? My. Oh my. Simple. It's just that his views on Notre Dame. 
he thinks Notre Dame is this up and coming team Has that he is really, them really good. He thinks that Notre Dame is really, really good. They just hey, got FSU Notre Dame on the phone line the last few weeks, <laughs> and now this week hey, is that the Toledo Rockets? I hope, I hope that Purdue takes care of Notre Dame. I hope that Notre Dame ceases to exist, and I Ooh. hope that Purdue takes care of business. Notre Dame should have joined the Big Ten. Notre Ooh. Dame could have been in the Big Ten, but they chose not to because of money and greed. Okay. So I hope that Purdue takes care of Notre Dame just like they have been taking care of them for the last 20, 30 years. Purdue, get it done. Coach Bell, shame on you for rooting for Notre Dame. Is that game on Peacock or is it going to be on real TV this time? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be on real TV this time. Oh, okay, good. Ooh, that's a good call out there. I mean, calling out my former coach. And our current athletic our director current and athletic our boss. Director and and boss. one of our bosses. I feel like you might get a letter in the mail. <laughs> nah, I'm telling the truth. Okay. All right, my call here goes to a guy that needs a lot of psychological care. Um, this guy. You can't call yourself out. You got to call somebody else out. No, I, I oh. stop me. I'm calling out. Oh. oh. He, he needs help, serious help. Um, he's a big Michigan fan, a big Detroit Red Wing fan. His name is our current Lake Orion Girls basketball coach, Bob Bridges. And this guy, I don't know what to think about this guy. Because he's a huge Michigan fan. I'm trying to have him see the light when it comes to Michigan, Michigan State. You know, I know that I know that he's giving me grief and I've given him grief. We've called each other in the morning, you know what I mean? Considering what life's been going on. And for that, you know, I've been telling him, you know, Paul Bunyan's gonna stay in East Lansing this year. And it's going to stay in East Lansing this year. So Paul Bunyan will stay in East Lansing this year. So, Mr. Bridges, I want you to know Michigan State will win nine games this year. Guaranteed. And also, That's a lot. And <clears throat> also, Mr. Bridges, your views on hockey. Of course, you have made it a mission to insult my Dallas Stars from not winning a Stanley Cup. And... I got the Stanley Cup final in 2020. He, he wanted to make sure that Dallas Stars never won the Stanley Cup. And you made a vow that I would never win the Stanley Cup in you my were lifetime. I was I'm close. not happy with you over Game 7. Uh, I was close. Dallas Colorado Series. I'll never forgive for that. But had not been for Bob Bridges causing my life to go upside down, I don't know what I would have been. But I know deep down that I know that I am better than you Ouch. in everything. Oh, and my teams oh. are better than you, and I can beat you in miniature golf any day of the week. There you go. That's your call out. That's your call. My call out. Hmm. No yelling. Wow, no yelling. I'm impressed. <sighs> the pandemic changed you, man. It did. I'm impressed. It did. <sighs> Anyone you want to call out? No. Why not? I don't call people out. Yeah, you you've called people out before. Yeah, yeah but. You know, it's not basketball season. I don't need to insult the people of Indiana or IUPUI or Fort Wayne, Fort Wayne or anything like that. So, oh, they're not happy with you still. I'm just going to co-sign your Notre Dame call out. Oh, you're going to agree with me. I'm definitely going to agree with you. Um, you think Purdue's taking down Notre Dame this weekend? I hope so. I Unf want Purdue to take down Notre Dame. Unfortunately, yeah, I cannot stand they're both Indiana Notre Dame. Teams. I think Purdue takes down Notre Dame this week. I really do. I don't like how Notre Dame's been playing. No, they especially stink. with Florida. Especially with they played against Florida State. Now Florida State lost to Jacksonville State this past weekend on a hail mary. Yeah, pretty brutal. Oh yeah. Um, I I like to see. You know, it's a lose lose for me. Purdue versus Notre Dame because I don't. Oh like no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, about I'm not ashamed Indiana. about that either. I'm not ashamed. I, I will pick Purdue any day of the week. Especially after Lesser what I had to evils. do, well, especially after what I did 20 years ago, I lost a bet to one of my scripts teachers. Who? Mr. Mady. And I had to sing that awful, no good, stupid fight song. Touchdown, and Jesus. I hate that song. It's an awful, awful, and I, I just, I want to put soap in my mouth over that. Okay. I think that's a good idea. Well, this is live TV, folks, so we got to wrap it up. Thank yep. you for tuning in. Thank you, guys. It's good to be back. Thank you to Owen TV for everything, yep. and uh, we'll see you very soon. Bye everyone. Take care. Bye everyone. Take care.